Okay. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to our monthly improvement reviews. We have an exciting presentation from Spencer Gooch and the rest of the High Tech High North County uh, crew. Woo -woo. Um, today, we'll be talking a little bit about attendance and improving attendance. Um, just a couple reminders of some of the norms. So this is an online conversation, so there is definitely some awkward silences. So I will take a little bit more role of uh, active role in facilitating. So please use your chat if you're in this room right now to kind of keep up or to post questions. If I don't hear any questions, I will start calling on people. Emilio, I'm looking in your direction. So um, just make sure if I call on you that you have your mic on. Feel free to pass if you don't have anything to say, and we'll move on to the next person. Um, we should be done in the next 45 minutes. Um, we will do a debrief for the last 15 minutes, so if you have a couple minutes to stick around and kind of tell us your last thoughts or to review the protocol, that would be awesome. Um, first of all, I just want to welcome some new faces. So Karen and Sheila, welcome. Haven't seen you guys at these reviews, so uh, welcome, and then we're excited that you guys decided to join us. Always nice to see new faces. All right, so um, just to review, we're doing a, a pretty standard protocol um, for those of us that are joining. Hey, Joanna. Um, those of you who have joined us before, um, the first uh, eight minutes I will give to Spencer and the rest of the team, and they'll just kind of give us an overview of some of the work that they've been doing around attendance. Um, I'll give us a two minute of kind of quiet reflection time so we can brainstorm some questions and chat those into the window. Those first round will be clarifying questions, so those are real yes no questions, so just kind of understanding the work. Um, we'll do another brainstorming and then we'll post some probing questions. We'll do about seven minutes of probing questions. We'll open it up to a discussion. It's really nice because we have a smaller, more intimate group, so we should all, I'll encourage everybody to kind of unmute their mics and just to kind of talk about that, and we'll ask Spencer and the rest of the team to kind of shut off their cameras. Um, we'll come back and they'll share us our thoughts around their central question, um, and then like I said, with, if we have some time at the end, we'll kind of do a short debrief. Any questions or thought before we begin? Okay, um, so Spencer, the floor and the what? <laughs> I saw those a couple people are joining too. So, um, uh, Spencer, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Um, so, uh, if you click on to the, uh, the first slide there, um, when, uh, when Isaac and Sheila and I started looking at attendance in a really, really critical way, um, we did so because we, we realized that we were looking at an interesting attendance problem. Um, every day we were seeing approximately 80 tardies, um, and we had uh, a very high number of students with more than 10% absences, which, was, which is regarded as chronic absenteeism. Um, and in conversations we realized that attendance wasn't prioritized among families that were at our school. And um, the, you know, North County has a has a has a kind of a combination of demographics when it comes to like uh, um, uh, socioeconomic diversity as well as um, uh, what people's past education experience is prior to coming to our school um, and in talking with students uh, about their attendance uh, we received comments that indicated essentially like a one thing, okay, um, that indicated that they weren't really sure why they necessarily needed to be there. Um, you can see on the slide that we had a, a student say, we don't do anything important in class anyway, so why do I need to be there? Um, we had students who thought that they could miss, you know, 10 days at a time and then say, I'm just going to come back and do the makeup work. Um, and so it was something that we looked at as, as a school admin team and said, we really, really want to change. Um, so, uh, to give you an idea, if you go down to the next one, uh, Isaac pulled this data uh, for us for what our attendance rates were, and you can see that we've been on a, on a steady uptick. So, yep. Okay. Um, so, in 2010, we had about a 93.6% attendance rate, and then this past year, we got almost all the way up to a 96% attendance rate um, uh, with a 95.9 .9 daily rate. Um, and in 2013-2014, that is when we really started to focus on attendance and what it is that we could do as a school to improve it. Um, and so we can see, uh, you know, the, the, the increase pretty substantially is like a 1.5% 
increased right away, which was great. And so we're looking to continue that trend and um, continue to move it up uh, in the coming year. And so what we did is we did a, we do a combination of things. Um, the the state office of education has a really really good uh, student attendance review board handbook that lays out all of the different kind of mechanisms that a big district school would do in the case of attendance issues, but it doesn't always translate very well to a small charter school. So, for example, like at a big district school, the, the SARB system or the Student Attendance Review Board, that's going to be a very intimidating process. You're going to go and you're going to, a family's going to get an actual subpoena and they're going to have to go appear um, in front of a panel consisting of somebody from the sheriff's department, somebody from probation, um, somebody from their school, plus somebody from the district, plus somebody from the county office of ed, um, plus whatever other community agency members are invited to those hearings, and uh, it can be pretty intimidating. And so something like that may not work necessarily for a small charter such as ourselves. Um, and so we did kind of a combination of uh, what's listed in the Student Attendance Review Board Handbook, um, plus things that we thought would be kind of more like uh, organizationally and culturally appropriate for our school. Um, so what we do is uh, when students miss 5, 10, or 15 absences, uh, they, they receive a letter in the mail. And the first letter just states how many absences they've missed um, and just making the parents aware. They don't need to do anything with that letter at that point. If they hit 10, then uh, they're requested to come and meet with me uh, regarding their absences and then we, we have a meeting and if we need to do something um, in terms of like a contract or a ceiling then we'll do that at that time. Um, and um, the other thing that we also did is we looked at our teachers for support as well because they were very likely feeling um, kind of like out on an island when it came to attendance because it can be really, really difficult in terms of like how it is that they respond to families who are saying, well, we're going to be gone for this amount of time, or my student was really, really sick. Um, so we gave our teachers language and expectations regarding um, communicating with families for attendance, and so they can talk about that at back to school night during their SLCs uh, within their own syllabi and that kind of thing. And so now when you look, you can see some commonalities across the classes, which is nice. Um, and then we also include a letter regarding attendance and the importance of attendance with all of our welcome packets at the beginning of every school year. Um, and uh, the language is clear in the letter and, uh, um, and that helps families from the beginning of the year understand that, intent, that attendance for our schools uh, needs to be a priority. Uh, so this slide is a screenshot um, that uh, Isaac took uh, Isaac generates a report every week of the different attendance issues that we're having and so on here you can see that the advisor, the, the column on the left is, is the student's advisor, uh, the column next to that is the student, and then what grade level they're in, how many absences they've had, I think that says semester two, um, and then the total number of absences plus the number of absences in the past week and then tardies and then if there's anything that we need to do in terms of action. And so uh, to make it very easy on the team, Isaac color codes who needs which letters. So a first letter might be a yellow and a second letter might be a green if we need meetings scheduled and those are highlighted as well. Um, and this is helpful because then Sheila, Isaac, and I have access to this and so we're able to look at it and clearly discern who's going to be there and what needs to be done. Um, so, I think you can go to the next one. Uh, there's different roles that we have, um, and uh, I wanted to include this because while, um, while I love attendance, I think attendance is just fantastic and fascinating. Um, it's a team effort that we make on improving attendance. So, Isaac is the school director. He generates and runs the weekly attendance reports, and he identifies the students who need, who need the letters in different meetings in there. Um, I'm the one who holds the meetings and I develop the ceilings so that would be the maximum amount of, attend of days that a student could miss without potentially receiving an incomplete or being ineligible to pass their courses. 
um, and then I implement those plans. And then our site manager, Sheila, she prints and mails all the letters and calls families who need the meetings and schedules them um, on my calendar. And so if we weren't all working together, this, this would be a full-time job just doing attendance. And if you look at a big district school, they have somebody in their student support or student services department who just does this. And so by dispersing the load of work between the three of us, uh, it makes it much more manageable and much easier. Um, and so the results that we saw, no, you were right. There you go. Um, so the results we saw were really, really positive. Um, this year, um, we saw that we had 23 students with less than 90% attendance, which um, is more than we would like. Um, but it was better than where we were. And then we saw our attendance rate climb to almost 96%, um, which I believe is the highest among the high schools in our organization. So we're feeling really, really good about that. Um, and what do we want to see for 2016 and 2017? And I guess these are kind of the questions where we're, what, that we're looking at for today, is in what ways can we improve our system that we already have in place? Um, and then thinking kind of long term, what are some of the underlying factors that lead to chronic absenteeism in our student population? And then what are the underlying factors that lead to a high attendance rate or less than two absences for the whole year? Um, and uh, maybe at some point Isaac can chime in about the, the survey that uh, we're going to be administering on uh, Monday. And that's, uh, that's, that's it. Eight, that's eight minutes. Nice job, Spencer. There you um, go. <laughs> so uh, Isaac uh, and Sheila, I know you were part of this team as well. We have maybe one minute. Is there like something you'd like to add to some of the stuff that Spencer touched on? And if not, we'll uh, launch into some of our clarifying, clarifying questions. Anything you want to? You did a good job. Yeah, I think you covered it beautifully. Nice. All right, so um, so we're going to take uh, two minutes, and we're going to kind of brainstorm as a group some clarifying questions. And remember, clarifying questions should be yes or no answers, not really trying to push Spencer's thinking, uh, and also not mask advice in disguise. I'll leave this slide up here that has, amongst other things, some of the results, but some of the questions that they had. Um, and <clears throat> So we'll uh, chat those in the box, and then we have a smaller group, so I'll just ask you to kind of, uh, once once we have a couple of those in, I'll just ask you to repeat those questions. So we'll take two minutes, um, and then we'll start posting our clarifying questions. And I think everybody has access to the slides, too, if you need to review any of the material to help you kind of generate some questions. All right, so we already have some good questions. So keep the questions coming, but um, cut it a little bit short since we're running a little bit behind. Um, and I'll ask Stacy to ask your first question. So everybody can kind of unmute your cameras because I'll start calling on people to ask questions. OK, I was just wondering if the advisors played a role at all. That's a great question. So were you inspired about that because they're listed on uh, the, the attendance report? Cool. Um, so that was something that I don't think we started doing really, um, we didn't really like involve the advisors too much when we first started doing it. Um, and we uh, did that because we, number one, we really believed in, in the power of the advisor, that the advisor should be involved in those kind of conversations. Um, and so we do, Isaac has another attendance report uh, that he shares with all of the advisors that also includes um, tardies, semester absences, and then uh, recent absences. And so that when advisors are doing like their grade checks with, with their advisees, they can also do kind of an attendance check and say, oh, I noticed that you missed you know, 
three days last week, is everything okay? Or they could even look at it and say, oh, you know, you're missing 10 days out of the whole semester already. What's going on? You're probably going to have, have a meeting with your family at some point. Anna, do you want to ask your question? Uh, you yeah. And by the way, if you guys don't know, this is for those of you who are joining us for the first time, this is Anna from Carnegie. She's our improvement facilitator extraordinaire. So thanks for joining us, Anna. <laughs> Can I just chime in really quickly on that? Yeah. Um, so that that is a really good question. So as uh, Spencer mentioned, there is another report um, that goes to all advisors that lists all of their kids. Um, however, and I do send that out weekly. However, I don't think most advisors do much with it, to be perfectly honest. So it, it is an area kind of that we could think about in terms of growth. And I'm going to chastise myself as a facilitator because that was probably a good probing question, but um, <laughs> we'll move on to Anna's question. Um, the, I just want, was one, I just didn't catch how many students total you're talking about here. Uh, in the whole school? Yeah, so 23 students have less than 90%. Over 550? 550? Yeah. Give or take. Um, and then I think a couple other people started to get at, like, other kinds of ideas. So the stuff that was on the slide that called it that says the system, is that kind of the main selection of changes that you've been doing? or are there other, you, And you mentioned the advisors, but are there other things that you're doing to work on attendance or... Uh, those are the, the those are the main ones that we're that we're implementing um, and that we've seen decent results with for now. Okay, thanks. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, Joanna, do you have audio? Do you want to ask your questions, or we can ask them for you? Yes, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can. Hi, Joanna. Yeah, hello. Um, I think I asked two questions. <laughs> yeah, pick your favorite. Does attendance? So I think does the attendance take up an account of a lot of your day? Or and do you yes, incorporate? Do you incorporate home visits. Uh, why don't we start with the uh, the one about the majority of the day? Yeah. Um, I would say that if if any just one of us did this, then yeah, it would take up a majority of the day. Uh, absolutely, because it's a ton of work for one person to do. Um, but by Isaac doing some of it, by Sheila doing some of it, and me doing some of it, it makes it much more manageable. Um, uh, the meetings that we hold. For attendance, take anywhere between like 15 minutes to 45 minutes, depending on what's going on. And this time of the year, um, or rather, probably in April and May, is when I'm is when we have the most attendance meetings because that's where people start to fall into that 10 or more absence range. Um, and maybe Sheila can talk a little bit about how long it takes to to do her end of it because I'm not entirely sure actually. Um, usually, just a to do the letters, it probably takes about an hour to kind of put it together, and then the phone calls are I usually do the following week. So I keep track based on the report that Isaac gives um, of the families. So they have time to get it in the mail, to digest it, and then I call them the following week. So usually my Monday ends up taking quite a bit of um, attendance time, but that's just I get it all done pretty much in one day. Okay. And then my second question is for the serious cases, do you uh, um, incorporate home visits to find uh, out? Well, that's a great question. Um, I know that, that traditional school districts will do home visits in serious attendance cases. We haven't needed to. Um, all of our chronic absentee students have come in um, for the meetings on their own, and so we haven't had to, to go out to their homes and uh, um, knock on wood for that. Good. Emilio, up next. Are those attendance reports that you're running, um, are they already preloaded in PowerSchool, or is that something that, you know, you have to do a little bit of data manipulation to kind of to get into that format? I'm going to pass that over to Isaac. Uh, they're not preloaded. It's like a quick export out of PowerSchool um, that I could show you. Um, and then it's basically kind of taking that um, and manipulating it a bit and putting it into a Google form. Good. All right. Do we have any last-minute clarifying questions? Um, Karen, I see. Good. Karen or Stacy? Or... Yes, Karen down there. Oh, I'll let you go, Karen. Do you guys have, you want to ask your question? Yes. Yeah, sorry, that was me typing. <laughs> oh, hey, Nicole. Okay. I'm not sure who it is. I hate when there's like two people there. 
Uh, we were wondering if um, it, the, one of the first slides had talked about about 80 tardies per day, mm -hmm. and we were wondering if the focus on absenteeism has um, created any change in, like, if you've noticed, if there was data around the tardiness. Yep. Great question. Um, so one of the things that we did around tardiness is rather than just having students come in and just get a tardy slip and go on their way to class, um, is Isaac and I uh, set up tables in the lobby of the school and we have students sign in to tardy binders uh, when they come in and um, uh, the main reason for that is to give the students and like they have to acknowledge that they're tardy they're not just walking in and getting a tardy slip they have to come in they sign their name they print why they were tardy and then they tell one of us oh I was tardy because of this or that and then if they have excessive tardies we might have them um, like uh, you know, stay in at lunch or pick up trash or something that that will kind of uh, um, uh, reinforce the idea that they need to be here on time. Um, and we've had some students who have said, "Well, picking up trash isn't going to make me get here on time. Here's what you should do." And in those cases, we've we've done that because we want it to be effective. Um, but we did see our tardies go down from about 80 every day to probably anywhere between like. Um, on a good day, about 10, um, and then probably on an average, about 25. Okay. So um, we're running a little short on time, and I just want to make sure that we end by 8.15. For those of you that can stick around, it'd be great for the discussion phase, but we're just going to go launch into probing questions, and again, we're trying to push the HTHNC team, so let's just be careful we're not trying to mask some of our questions as advice in disguise. Um, so we can start posting probing questions, or if you have one, you can just raise your hand and I can call it. Or we have a small group, so you can feel free to jump in. So I'll, I'll let Stacy ask the first question, and then others can go ahead and chat into the box so I know where you are. Stacy. Okay. Um, I was struck by the quotes that you shared at the beginning, kind of that got to this feeling of, of those three seem to kind of get at a feeling of like, it's not important that I be here, um, or, or, you know, the use of class time kind of thing, and I'm wondering if, like, how you guys address, like, the pedagogical issues, or if you, if that's something kind of still coming? Um, so those quotes came from just kind of, like, some early on issues when we first started looking at attendance and going to some of our kind of uh, our, our bigger chronic atten attendance problems. Um, and more than anything, it was just really interesting to hear that that was that was the, the mindset around it, that, that the perception was that at a project-based school you could just get it, just do all makeup work. Um, and so uh, that led us to talking with our teachers as a whole group around what does that mean and when is makeup work uh, acceptable and when is it not, and what's the purpose of makeup work. Um, and so it led to some interesting conversations um, and it was good to get everybody on the same page. I mean, it's, it's a difficult system to implement around attendance if you have one teacher who says, I'll give you makeup work for anything for any amount of time that you miss, um, and another one who says, well, I'll only give you makeup work if it's an excused absence. Like, those are two very different worlds. Um, and uh, um, if as a school we have a kind of that common understanding of what does it mean to be a student here, why is attendance important, and if students are coming in and saying, we don't do anything important in class, then that's an important conversation to have with teachers. Great. Um, Anna, question? Yeah, I think it follows up on that a little bit around like the just doing some work to understand the causes and that's one of your questions um, which is a great one to start thinking about um, mm -hmm. you know, the folks who have experience um, and kind of the, the content expertise around this issue but I'm wondering if you've done kind of focus groups or user, user student interviews um, around mm -hmm. kind of why are they not there, and for the ones who are there, why are they there, just to try to get a sense of uh, what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, we, haven't, we haven't done those yet. Uh, um, that's something that we're... Um, I can tell you that anecdotally, like when we've talked with our students who are missing 10% or more of the school year, um, you know, we have a few students who um, were pulled out due to medical reasons. We have a few other students who were out uh, due, to, due to suspension days. Um, we have other students who were out due to ill-timed family vacations. Um, so we have kind of a general idea, but we haven't done the focus groups yet, and that's something that we would like to do. 
Great. Emilio? Oh, Emilio is gone. Emilio, are you back? Do you want to ask your question? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, okay. I actually have a sign that says I'm not crazy. I'm just on a conference call. Um, <laughs> I mean, ignore it all the time. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, I'm kind of curious, like, what are next steps um, if students and families don't so follow your kind of SARB process? You know, for example, like they don't attend meetings. Yeah, um, we had we we had one like that this year um, where I had scheduled a meeting probably four or five times with a family and they just kept missing and missing and missing um, and uh, so uh, I would leave I would leave voicemails for the family and I wouldn't be able to get in touch with them I would talk with the student in in my office and then that, then they would say okay I'll have my mom call you and then I would never hear back um, and then so finally I just sent her an email and I said currently she's missing this many days here's how many more days she'll be permitted to miss and receive an incomplete. Here's how many days she would miss and not be eligible to pass, period. Um, and uh, that seemed to do the trick because then mom came in the next day and said, I got your email. Thank you so much. Like, we want her to be here. Um, and so then that seemed to solve the problem. We haven't had um, a family who refuses to participate just yet, which is good. Um, I, I want to jump in just because I have a question as a facilitator, but um, can, I just wonder what I'm, I'm struck by with your work is just how well you've kind of identified these roles as a team and how effectively you've worked together as a team, as a three-part team. So I was wondering if anybody could speak to kind of the process of how did you develop the team, how did you define these roles, and just that well pro that process around attendance. So this could go to um, anyone. Isaac, do you have a good idea around that? Uh, I, I don't think it was as intentional as you're making it out to be. <laughs> I think it was more that um, recognized there was a problem and um, kind of we each stepped up where we thought we could support it. Okay. Um, Stacy, question? Yeah, I was hoping you could just tell us a little bit more about the survey on Monday that you're giving out and what you hope to learn from it. Also to Isaac. So, um, I, I become really interested in kind of understanding like what is it that's um, leading kids either to be here um, every day um, or to um, miss a large amount of school, right? Um, and so one of the things, and this was also in connecting it to some of the other ideas um, uh, that we are looking at as improvement teams, was to give them a survey on kind of academic mindsets. And so this is a survey that Camille Farrington shared with us um, about a year ago um, in terms of, I think it's called Becoming Successful Learners. Right? Um, and it's really just getting at each of the different um, academic mindsets. But I'm totally open to doing other things. We are bringing all of our kids who either did not um, miss a single day, which I think is 27 of our students, um, or missed one day or less. So it's, a, I think it's 27 kids haven't missed any days, and then another um, about 45 kids <laughs> only missed one day. Um, and so it comes out to be about 75 or 80 total kids. We're um, having a lunch for them on Monday, and during that time, the hope was to also have them fill out a survey. And but I'm open to what that survey would be. This was just one idea. And the Farrington survey doesn't ask them about like reasons they're missing or anything. Just it's all focused just on academic mindsets and how it is that they are feeling within the space here at school. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna have. Uh, Isaac and Spencer turn off their cameras in a second unless there's any last minute burning questions. Okay, so we're going to open up, and I know that we said 8.15 and, and we're bumping up that a little bit, so if people need to go, I, I totally understand that, but we'll open it up to kind of a discussion. So, um, and again, we'll start with some positive stuff, some positive feedback on some of the work that the team has done, and then we'll kind of, I'll keep the question slides up, and I should have had them review their questions a little bit, but um, it, it's in what ways can they improve their current system around attendance, and what are some of the underlying factors that led to chronic absenteeism? And I think we've started hinting at some of that stuff with the surveys. Um, and what are the other underlying factors that lead to high attendance? So um, I'll put 12 minutes on the clock, and then I'll ask everybody to turn their mutes off. Emilio, I'm looking at your general direction. Again, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we'll, uh, if you, I'll, I'll just call on people down the line, but if you have something you can do, you can just chat hand in the box. Okay, so what are some, what are some 
the striking things or some good things that we see about the work that they're doing. All right, we can start now. I mean, I appreciate that they're really um, trying to get at the underlying causes of it, um, and I think that that's important, to, important from an equity perspective. Um, when we think about what is it that keeps students from coming to school or allows students to have access to getting to school easily. Um, so I appreciate that they're really trying to dig deep with this and not simply saying, you know, how can we get more students here with kind of a stick in hand, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that, um, again, I just think it's so, it's, I think it's the important of understanding each other's strengths. I think that, um, that's I love the roles that they've identified for each other. I love that they seem to work together so well as a team. Um, and they've kind of figured out, like I think Spencer said, that if one person was doing this, it would be their whole job. So it's nice that they've identified these ways. And it, it, to me, it speaks to the importance of how data can help improve practice, right? So I think Isaac has spent, Isaac has spent a lot of time like pulling these data factors to help identify some of the issues, and it's really pushed the group in a good way. And it's not just a, a punitive getting everybody to come here, but really looking at the help them identify what are some of the reasons our kids are not coming and asking those questions about, um, you know, what, what is it they're not buying into the system? What are they, what are they not found about the systems? Kind of building on... Oh. Go, go. Go ahead, Stacy. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to say, build, building on that, I'm just struck by kind of the elegance of the attendance reports that, that get produced each week and how the next steps are, like, built in there in color codes. Um, I think it's a great example of not just like collecting the data, but actually making the documentation and analysis of the data really transparent. Um, so that is really cool and a great example of that. So I wonder if Karen or Joanna has any thoughts, people that are dealing with attendance probably a lot more than some of us about some of the work or maybe some of the questions that have been asked by Spencer or the rest of the team? Well, it's hard for me because I've seen what it looks like at their school. Um, in the morning, and I've been to many of the sites to see kind of the mad rat rush of students when they're tardy. So my my goal is to help schools when it comes to tardies, not necessarily absences, because, and I'm wondering if there is a different approach for students that are tardy, students that are absent, and students that are truant, and if, you know, different, uh, interventions or improvement of the system or mindset would help with each of those three categories because I think that you know truancy is you know what where, where I see it most is, is in uh, classes where students don't find value so they come to school but don't attend the appropriate classes mm -hmm. students you know are responsible to come to school but they're also resistant so they're late or there's you know parental reasons and then there's the absences so I, I'm just saying maybe I, I would like to see maybe um, <clears throat> looking at those, if, if that is also what they found is that those three different chunks uh, need different areas of, of improvement research. Great. Karen or Anna, any thoughts on some of the work that you've seen today? Hi. Or Nicole, who's sitting there too. <laughs> Sorry, Nicole. <laughs> go ahead, Karen. I had the opportunity to go up to North County earlier this year and sit with Spencer while he had a meeting with a parent who he was bringing in because they had reached the um, 10 absences. And from my perspective, it was a really positive, valuable meeting. And the, the parent um, just didn't, before he came in, I don't think that he realized the impact that the attendance, uh, his child not attending school has on the teamwork that happens in the classroom. So. I was really excited about that, but it is hard to institute at different sites without having the complete buy-in of the staff and having an all-school policy. It is difficult to do it as just a one-person or two-person task because often attendance gets looked at as that it's just something that happens to us versus something that we can affect. But I'm excited that we're doing this so that maybe there can be more buy-in throughout the organization and we can have, um, looking forward, more buy-in on the attendance, that we can do something about attendance. It doesn't just happen. It, it, that, that's interesting that you say it really is a whole school effort because I think one of the challenges that I've seen um, and I face both as a teacher and as a director is this 
conundrum of, of being in a project-based learning environment and, um, you know, where traditional grading doesn't always happen and, so, and, and where attendance is just so crucial to success in projects. And, um, you know, you have, I, I have one student who's missed over 30 days this year um, but has a B plus in both in, in his classes. And it's just kind of like trying to square that, you know, uh, with that that peg with a round hole, it's just it's difficult um, sometimes, especially when parents are like, "Well, what's the problem? Like he's got B pluses," and it's just like, "Well, that's not really capturing what's supposed to be happening. He's turning in minimal work when he's out, and this." And so I think there's just this larger issue of 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 the overlap between attendance and academics, and and in a school like ours, it doesn't necessarily have the same values with traditional grading. Um, uh, or, or within certain classrooms, rather, I should say. I don't want to speak for all classrooms. But uh, how, how does attendance play into that? And, and, and uh, I'm just, I'm, I don't have an answer. I'm just curious about that interplay there. And how, how can it be that in a project-based learning school, a kid can miss 25% of the year but still have B pluses? That's just, that's just something I struggle with. Mm -hmm. so what, oh, sorry, go ahead, Stacey. Or... Well, I was just thinking about their, their questions around kind of getting at the underlying factors that lead to chronic absenteeism or like a really great attendance rate and appreciating Joanna's um, distinction between tardies versus absences versus truant that some of those, there might be different factors, different reasons for each of those. Um, I'm just thinking a cool next step could be um, doing like interviews or focus groups like Anna was suggesting with like folks who were high in those things and folks who are like chronically absent or chronically tardy to understand kind of what the potential factors could be and then to use those things to design a really simple survey that every every student could take because it would be really interesting to learn from all of the students kind of what the factors are for them um, around those things and then to be able to actually get some like get some demographic data with that survey so you could kind of look at how and identify bright spots and like who are the folks that are really um, we would almost expect to have more absences and if they aren't what are they doing so I could see this really cool cycle of interviews to survey to further interviews to understand those factors more and design some change ideas to address those yeah I would say too like I would love to see a survey that talks to teachers um, which is getting an Emilio and I think Karen's point so what a staff what a staff perception around this. Talking to um, some of the executive assistants, I think, um, like Karen and Sheila, it's so nice to have their buy-in um, around these issues. So just the thinking about those things, I, I think, are really would be really important in kind of pushing the work and helping identify. Because I think they talked about the student population, and there are some factors in that, but there also is some buy-in around teachers and some buy-in around the staff around attendance and the importance of it. So really, fully understanding the issue, I think, would be would be important too. Anybody else? Joanna, Emilio? Can we, is there any specific things that we think they can either try that could help improve the system? Or any thoughts on what are some of the underlying causes of this? I'm still just really struck by the student quotes. I mean, I think a lot of the, um, like we can communicate the importance of being here. Um, in a PBL school, but I think that 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 question of like where are students finding relevance and do they, um, if if they're not, what what could we be doing differently? And understanding that everybody has teenage moments as well, and so some of those moments are just like I just don't want to come to school. Um, but I, I wonder about the pedagogical next steps mm -hmm. for discussion with teachers. Yeah, I think I, I think that. Really, like, I think that they've done a great job at developing the system. I think it's really about talking to the kids and really quite understanding why those issues of why they're not coming. I think that's the best. I do have a question of scale, and maybe uh, since Karen's on the phone and we have... So what if you were thinking of adopting some of these structures at your school, so, so some of the improvement sciences, this is an idea, it's working at their site, and maybe, Amelia, you could speak to this too. Um, what would help you adopt some of these structures at your site, if you were thinking, great, now we want to focus on attendance. What would help you? What would you need to see? How would you need to see it to help move your work? I think for me, just easier access to the data. Um, you know, I, I've worked with Isaac on, on generating similar reports for grades, and there is a lot of manipulation. It's just time consuming, and to the, to the degree that there's a way to just uh, create a, a simple kind of 
point and click, um, you know, attendance report button. Um, I know that would help other staff as well who are maybe a little more intimidated by things um, when it comes to using PowerSchool. And um, I mean, that's just on a very base level. Um, and, and then just those clear roles that they have, having somebody in charge of disseminating that weekly to, to advisors and teachers and, um, you know, that's not really improving on what they're doing because they're already doing that. But uh, just trying to, just to scale this organization wide, just having those roles very clearly defined would be helpful. You know, we're in, and we're in a middle school setting too where we don't have deans. So it's kind of the office manager or me doing it. And so it's just trying to figure that out. I agree with Emilio. Um, it, it would help in to institute it in our school to have everyone know what their role is in the attendance process and also um, maybe suggestions around PDs that we could do to bring the whole community of teachers together and have like you had said, um, maybe the same standard across all the different classrooms for what constitutes accepting late work and you know what attendance means in each classroom. And I think that from my perspective that would help make it not just a one person job that you can never seem to get a, on top of. Great. I really admire what you guys have done in North County. It's uh, kind of paved the way for other schools to be able to do the same thing. Woot woot. Perfect last line. Thank you, Karen. All right, so I'm going to invite uh, Isaac and Spencer and Sheila back into the conversation. Uh-oh, they lost. We lost Spencer. He just dropped out. <laughs> All right, Isaac and Sheila, you're taking the reins for the team. <laughs> so if you could just take one minute and just share back some of your thoughts or some of your thinking after going through this process, and then uh, I'll, I'll let everybody go. Absolutely. Um, can you see me? Yeah. Okay, good. Oh, good. So Sorry, I, get, I get offended easily, and I just hang up sometimes. <laughs> um, so we're just talking about what we heard and what we liked and what we're thinking. Yeah, so I, I, Isaac got a couple thoughts, so I'll, I'll let Isaac, and then we'll go back to you, Spencer, for our last thoughts. Okay. Um, I just really appreciated the conversation. Um, I do think it is a, a, a real team effort that all three of us you know, have, have really committed to um, and how to kind of bring that to other schools. Um, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to do that, but I, I, I think that having a team that is committed to it um, and clearly delineating the ro roles, as Karen suggested, I think is super smart. Um, I really liked a quote that Karen um, had um, in terms of it's not something that happens to us, but rather something we can do something about. I just thought that was... Um, a really beautiful way to encapsulate kind of the issue around attendance. Um, I also love the idea of, of developing surveys. I don't know exactly how to do it, and I don't have a ton of experience around it. Um, so kind of this I, almost cyclical nature of, of interviewing and then developing surveys based on interviewing and then interviewing, I would love some support with that. Um, uh, I, I think it could be really cool. I want to kind of get something out, um, but maybe, I don't know, I, that that's how I'm feeling a little bit on Monday, is like I would like to get something um, and capture kind of um, something from kids around data that with them we could bring into, you know, other conversations around improvement, and so that was part of my thinking around kind of using this uh, survey from Camille Farrington, but um, perhaps, Ryan, we could look at that kind of before Monday and see what you think of it. <clears throat> Definitely. Uh, Spencer, any last minute thoughts? Yeah. Um, and there's so, some great stuff in the chat box, by the way, in case you, in case you guys aren't reading Spencer and Isaac. Um, no, I'm reading it. Oh, good, good, good. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Um, uh, I really like what Joanna's getting at about this idea of, like, different mindsets surrounding tardies, truants, and absences. And I agree. I think that there are different mindsets as those things are different aspects of attendance. Um, and... Um, Let's see. Uh, I like the way Stacy put that there's an elegance to the attendance reports. <laughs> that's uh, that's good. Um, and uh, and then also with Karen, um, uh, I really loved 
uh, meeting with you and John and talking about the attendance that day and kind of walking you guys through it. And I'm always happy to do those kinds of things, um, you know, and 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 maybe helping consult in terms of finding what what might work best for different sites um, because ours works for our site and there's certain things that I think could be consistent but I think that there's also some things that work well because of who's on our team and kind of where we are as a school um, and that's important um, and then Ryan you had got at a really good question uh, in terms of what is the staff perception around it um, and uh, um, that's something that I think we could definitely incorporate as we think about where we go with this in the future. Um, and then uh, Joanna had asked a great question around like restorative practice in excessive absences, and and that that's really kind of pushing my thinking, like um, because it's one thing to be punitive and and uh, and kind of say, well, now you can't do this, but then it's another thing to kind of say, well, why are you doing this? <laughs> um, and so I really like that. And then. Finally, there's one thing I was thinking about is I think it's important for people to know is to familiarize themselves with attendance law um, and just like where what are regarded as excused absences and what what aren't. And I realize that as a charter, we're a little bit different because of because of all the waivers and everything that we have. But it's important to know kind of what are, where other schools are falling in this. And when we get students who are coming to our schools, like what their previous experience might be with it, um, and uh, even just knowing that like. School districts have student attendance review boards. That's important to know. And so if you don't know that and you don't know the process, it would be great to familiarize yourself with it. And I really want to work uh, with Isaac to, uh, to help with those surveys because I've seen some that are similar before in other school districts, and uh, I think we can come up with something really cool. One other thing that I wanted to mention, um, I think on the surface uh, it comes across as being fairly punitive in terms of, like, specific thresholds and um, you know what that means if you were to meet that threshold but as Karen mentioned um, uh, and it also speaks a little bit to the restorative practice question that Joanna had uh, the meetings are actually really quite supportive right um, Spencer is, uh, is in, I think some parents and some students come in thinking it's going to be um, kind of a punitive space, but it's actually a really incredibly supportive, nurturing space where he's trying to figure out kind of what it is that's going on. Um, and so I, I am almost thinking it might be really nice to film one of those, right, um, to be able to show that to other um, directors, site managers, deans. Um, to kind of see what it looks like. Because it sounds too punitive in nature, and it's really not. <laughs> you know I don't like being on camera, though, Isaac, so I just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, guys. Uh, let's give it up for our, our team from High Tech High North County, and we'll make sure to s send our thanks to Sheila as well. So thanks, guys, so much for sh uh, sharing your work with us. So um, for those of you that need to drop out, that's fine. I'm just going to do a quick debrief for those of you who have about an extra five minutes and just want to kind of debrief the process. Um, but thank you guys for bringing us. This is a great question. Um, and thanks again for those of who of you are joining us for the first time. Um, and Joanna will get your camera working at some point so you can join us and we can all see you. Um, but thank you guys so much. Um, all right, so we have, so okay. those of you who need to drop out, feel free to drop out, and then we'll just do a quick debrief um, of the process if you guys have time. So um, we have five minutes, let's put five minutes on the clock. So again, we're going to leave their issue of, um, of <clears throat> attendance, and I just want to talk quickly just about how this worked. So was there a point in the conversation that helped kind of push the work forward? What was helpful about this process? So this is, I think, our fourth improvement review. So what was helpful about this process? And um, so I will just open it up to anybody. So we can just go down the lines and, and talk about it unless anybody wants to jump in right now. Uh, OK. I see Karen or Nicole down there. Do you want to jump in? Um, I was just going to say like that it, I found it so valuable for this particular um, improvement work to have like perspectives like Karen's that are um, and so I don't know just thinking about the protocol and when the invitations um, are kind of going out for these um, re improvement reviews that it may like in terms of like expanding the invitations that it may be interesting to just think about who else is connected from this work may be able to share really valuable perspectives and insights. Um, or could also really um, maybe interested in that kind of scaling piece. I don't know. I just found it really helpful to have um, new voices. 
I agree. I think we tend to invite people that are part of like the improvers network, but I think we're all as a school interested in improvement. So um, it's nice and it's great having Joanna. It's great having this multi-level like here are stakeholders at, at, at every level of the work that's being done and they all add a very unique perspective to it. Can't do very unique, it's one of a kind, but a unique perspective to the work. So I, I appreciate that. It's always nice to have new faces too. So Isaac, you, you've got Isaac and Amelia, you've been on a couple of these. Any thoughts about um, this, the work, or so I, I also say it's really nice having a smaller group because I feel like it, it felt a little bit more fluid too, so I don't know how it felt for everybody else. Hi. Any thoughts, Emilio, Isaac? I'm gonna call on one of you. <laughs> okay, Isaac, go. <laughs> I would echo the the um, inclusion of, of other folks. I don't know how best to do it. Um, I wonder about asking the presenter right, if there are other people um, uh, and like who, um, from the pres presenter's perspective, who are the folks that would be interested in the work and then possibly kind of reaching out to different groups based on that. Um, I do know, for instance, that um, Brett is thinking about implementing some stuff. Um, I'm not sure if he's on. He probably probably is. I'm not sure if he's on all of the uh, emails, but I know he has some real ideas um, and is, I think, even looking at, um, you know, bringing somebody on next year who's going to focus on this type of stuff. Um, I would also echo kind of the, the size of the group. I really liked it. Um, but again, there's a tension around kind of um, wanting tons of people um, and then having a more uh, uh, kind of loose conversation and or having kind of a really tight-knit group and everybody being able to participate. And I, I like, I yeah, like, and Joanna. Oh, good. Oh, I just, I, I, uh, I like that idea of bringing in other people who are interested in this because my, you know, I'm starting to get a little more well-versed with improvement science, but this, this issue of scalability came up and this idea of like taking something that seems to have been working on a small scale and let's just try it out in other sites. And so I guess I'm, I'm kind of hungry for clear next steps on how to take the work that Isaac and, and, uh, and, and his crew are doing and, and just replicate that here without tweaking it so much that, that we're not sure what worked and what didn't. You know what I mean? Like I kind of want to just take what they did and see if it can work here at the middle school and then kind of reflect on it as opposed to like taking the work they're doing and adding our own twists and then having too many variables in there. Does that make sense? So I guess within this protocol, if there's a way, and I don't know if this is the right form for that, but if there's a way to kind of chart the clear next steps um, for that. Good, that's a great thought. That definitely thing to consider. Um, Joanna? Yes, I did like how, I did like the buy-in from the school staff of the process, and then the steps they took to, um, kind of effect change in their school and then review and I think it starts with the school, the school gotta run. their understanding of what they want to address and how. Good. Great. Thanks Joanna. Any last minute thoughts? Alright, I'm going offline. <laughs>